Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to historic Fort McNair. As you all know, we are just two weeks away from the 58th presidential inauguration. As the commander of the Joint Task Force National Capital Region, I will tell you that we are honored to be the Department of Defense lead for ceremonial support to the inauguration, and we are proud to be part of this great team that is planning and executing this historic event. The military's participation in presidential inaugurations dates back to 1789 when soldiers and militia escorted George Washington to his swearing-in ceremony at Federal Hall in New York City, and we are proud to carry on this tradition. Today we are honored to have here with us the Mayor of Washington, D.C., so please welcome Mayor Muriel Bowser. Good morning, everybody, and uh, we are delighted to be here at Fort McNair, and I want to thank the Major General and all of his staff uh, who support us each and every day, but who will especially be supporting us uh, in the 58th inaugural ceremonies. I want to acknowledge many of the people on my team and the federal team who are, who are with me today uh, and who will be available uh, to answer questions. Uh, the Deputy Mayor for Public Safety in Washington, D.C., Kevin Donahue, um, the District's Director of Homeland Security, Chris Geld. Uh, the Chief of Police in the District, uh, Peter Newsham, our DDOT Director, Leif Dormsjo, our DPW Director, Chris Shorter, our Health Director, Dr. LaQuandra Nesbitt, uh, and also our, uh, our Human Services Director, Laura Zeilinger. Uh, also, uh, the D.C. National Guard is represented here, as well as the Fire Chief, Gregory Dean. I am a very thankful as well uh, to the federal partners who have joined us, and you will hear from the special agent in charge for the Washington, D.C. office uh, for the United States Secret Service, um, as well well as uh, park police representatives and representatives from the Federal uh, Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA. Uh, so let me thank all of them um, for the work that they have been doing in preparation for the inauguration. Uh, of course, in Washington, D.C., uh, we are the capital of the United States of America and the seat of our federal government. And every four years, our government works overtime to keep everyone safe uh, during during the peaceful transition of power uh, that is the hallmark of our democracy. So since April, my administration has been working closely with our federal, local, and regional, and private sector partners to ensure the seamless oversight an integrated management of this uh, national event and this special security event. As uh, members of the media, we are so grateful to see so many of you, both local, national, and international outlets, uh, in here today because you, uh, in fact, play a key role in helping residents and business owners and the many, many visitors who will come to Washington, D.C. Um, and it's important that they are prepared uh, so that they know how to access all the events conveniently and safely. Uh, and for the 58th presidential inauguration, uh, we in Washington, D.C. have created two important information channels, and we uh, thank you for sharing that today and also invite visitors and members of the public to check it frequently because that's where we will be um, providing updated information. Uh, the first is our official website. It is inauguration.dc.gov, inauguration.dc.gov. The second is uh, the district's uh, official inauguration Twitter account at Inaug2017, and that's I-N-A-U-G-2017 on Twitter. So both our website and Twitter accounts are up and running and will continue to be updated between now uh, and the day of the inauguration with news and logistics about security and getting around Washington, D.C. during the inauguration. So please follow these tools uh, and check back with them frequently. So in addition to being uh, a time for our country to come together and honor our democracy, uh, every inauguration is also an opportunity for 
our city's vibrant communities to shine and for uh, our city to show the nation uh, about local Washington, D.C. too. Uh, Federal Washington will be on display, um, but we invite the many visitors to Washington to see our neighborhoods, support our visitors, uh, support our businesses, and get to know the residents of Washington, D.C. So we look forward to hosting um, this national celebration, uh, and I am going to ask Director Geldhardt and Special Agent Ebert uh, to provide a few uh, more uh, specifics about our planning, uh, and then we will be joined by General Manager Paul Wiedenfeld to talk about Metro's preparations. Uh, Director Geldhardt. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, everyone. The district has a long history of successfully executing inaugurations and other major national special security events in our nation's capital. As the mayor mentioned, since April, we have been working with our federal, state, local partners on security and contingency planning to ensure that all those who choose to come to the nation's capital for the inauguration or the surrounding events can have a safe and peaceful experience. To anticipate questions about potential protests or demonstrations, the district, in concert with our park police partners, work daily with individuals and groups that come to our nation's capital to express their First Amendment rights. Our goal is always to make sure people can come, express their rights peacefully and lawfully, regardless of subject matter, and ensure everybody returns home safely at the end of the day. All dis as district residents, we all know that large national special security events, such as inaugurations, impact our city. The key for us is planning ahead. For specific details on the inaugural schedule, road closures, prohibited items, city services, and transportation op options, please visit our official website, as the mayor mentioned, at inauguration.dc.gov. I'd now like to introduce our partner and the federal lead for the National Special Security Event, Special Agent in Charge of the United States Secret Service Washington Field Office, Brian Ebert. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Mayor, thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. January 20th will be our 58th presidential inauguration. It was designated a national special security event in July of last year by the Department of Homeland Security. It will be our country's 56th national special security event, about half of which have taken place here in Washington, D.C. As with all national special security events, the Secret Service is the lead agency responsible for overseeing the development and implementation of the operational security plan. We work in close conjunction with our federal partners, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, who's responsible for incident response and recovery, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation, who is responsible for intelligence, as well as incident investigations. The Secret Service's core strategy is to leverage our existing strong relationships with our law enforcement, public safety, and military partners here in the National Capital Region and to collaboratively develop a comprehensive security plan for the inauguration. And that's what we've done. There are many partners involved in this planning, uh, many of whom are represented in the room here today, and uh, as well as many other partners. The Secret Service employs a unified command model. We establish an executive steering committee, which is staffed with senior representatives from those agencies who have primary jurisdiction over the events. The Executive Steering Committee is supported by 25 subcommittees who focus on the various components of the overarching security plan. Examples of some of the subcommittees are crowd management, credentialing, fire life safety, and health and medical. The expertise and the coordination of all those involved is critical to a successful inauguration. We've been working on this for a long time. We've conducted numerous joint training initiatives and tabletop and field exercises to ensure that we have an immediate, well-coordinated, and effective response to any challenges that we might face during the inauguration. Using our collaborative process, we've developed a comprehensive, integrated, and seamless security plan to ensure a safe environment for our protectees, 
as well as all the general public attending. We are well prepared and ready for this inauguration. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Paul Wiedefeld, General Manager of uh, Metro. Um, just want to talk a little bit about some of the operations so that we'll be performing on the 20th. Um, we will have Metro Rail service starting at 4 a.m. and running till midnight. We will, we will be running peak hour service throughout the day from 4 a.m. till 9 p.m. Uh, there will be five stations closed due to security concerns. Uh, they will be Mount Vernon Square, Archives, Federal Triangle, Smithsonian, and the Pentagon. Uh, we also be running a bus uh, service. As you can imagine, that will also be impacted with all the road closures. So we recommend you go to our website to look at the implications of the bus routes there. And then finally, um, as you use our system, use our parking facilities. We have a number of parking facilities, almost 60,000 parking spaces throughout the region that you be sure to get there early. They do fill up pretty quickly and follow our Twitter feed, uh, and we'll be monitoring the usage so that you can plan accordingly. Uh, we are also are offering a special one-day inaugural pass. It's $10. It's, it's not only a great bargain, but it prevents you from having to uh, stand in line to get, to get a pass uh, at our stations. Uh, if you do that before the 13th, we can get mailed out to you. So we suggest you do that online as quickly as possible so that we can have that for you. We will also be selling those the day of the event, but again, the lines will be much thicker at that point. And I also want to thank all of our partners, um, uh, obviously the mayor and the general for hosting us today, and uh, Leif Dorms Show, who we work w very closely with in the, in the district. I also want to mention uh, our sister transit agencies around the country, because we reached out to them several months ago to provide us uh, law enforcement capabilities, and literally across the country, they are stepping up to do that, so we appreciate their time as well. Mayor? Thank you. We're happy to take a few questions. Matt Acklin. You talked about the peaceful process, um, transition of power. Do you have any reason to believe that we, it won't be peaceful that day? Is there any indication that there'll be more protests this inauguration than in the past? Well, my, my expectation of, of this entire team is that they have um, prepared for any and all circumstances. Uh, and you uh, have heard uh, Director Geldhart talk about um, our preparations for the ability of um, people to come to our city and exercise their, their First Amendment rights. Um, many have uh, applied for permits to do exactly that, um, and they have been handled by, by the various agencies. Um, and so we expect people to comply uh, with, their com uh, with their permits. Uh, we expect them um, to exercise their rights uh, peacefully, and we'll be prepared uh, should, should anybody choose not to. Yes, sir. Are you done with the permitting process, or are, still, are some of them still up in the air? I understand that there were some changes last night. Or early. Sure. Let me ask the special agent uh, to speak to, to that on uh, the federal end, and Chris and the chief can, um, can let us know about any local um, permits. And I'm talking specifically about along the parade route. Uh, the Secret Service respects the rights of the public to demonstrate and to voice their views. Uh, we expect that a lot of folks are going to come down to Washington, D.C. over the course of the inauguration and uh, exercise their First Amendment rights. Uh, there's been a lot of permits applied for. Uh, there's been some granted. I understand that, that there are some still being processed. How many have been granted? Excuse me? How many have been granted? I don't have the specific number on that. Will there be designated spaces along the route, like around Freedom Plaza, or something where people are told to be to protest? Uh, the Secret Service is going to treat everybody there as, as general public, everybody that, that comes into the event, so uh, there's not designated areas. An individual group might decide to meet in a particular area, but uh, we don't designate protest areas. How did these groups serve? One second. Okay. Let me, let me add a sure. local question. Um, from a D.C. perspective, so there's really two um, agencies that, that grant permits uh, in the District of Columbia, and that's the uh, Park Police uh, and the Metropolitan Police Department. Um, we've had three uh, permits applied for to the Metropolitan Police Department, and all three have been granted. Um, and they've been, we've been working with them on the areas where um, they will be having their uh, ability to exercise their First Amendment rights. And I know the Park Police have been working with all the permits they've received as well. Um, the idea is we have to work with the Presidential Inaugural Committee uh, and other folks uh, to ensure that the spaces that people are applying for are available for them to do that. 
Um, and sometimes those things take a little bit of a while uh, for the Presidential Knowledge Committee to determine uh, which spaces they're going to use for um, bleachers or things like that in areas that they're going to use for, for their use and then what comes open. So we have the permits. Again, the city has approved all three that we've received. Um, and I know that the Park Service has been working with all of those that applied for them uh, to ensure that they can be accommodated as best as possible. Okay. Next question. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell us, introduce yourself, please? Um, Samara with Channel 9. Can you tell me where those three uh, permits have been granted? Yeah, oh, Freedom Plaza for us. All three of them? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Just to address that, Griff Jacob from Fox News. Yes, sir. <clears throat> As we covered protests in the DNC and RNC, much smaller scale than the numbers I think you're expecting, but one of the tactics we've seen that changes is that they move a lot. If these groups that have been granted a, a, a designated area, if they begin to move, is movement of concern of yours uh, uh, causing disruptions, and, and will you arrest people if they do not comply with their designated sort of area? Uh, well, certainly we, we want to encourage everybody to come and celebrate or those who come to protest. We want to encourage them to do that. Um, our first responsibility, of course, is the safety of everybody who is participating. Um, and that is how um, our agencies uh, will respond. Yes, sir. How much money is the city spending on the inauguration, and how much of that is uh, reimbursed by the federal government? Uh, we expect it all to be reimbursed by the federal government. Uh, we we think the number is going to be thirty million. I think so far uh, nineteen million has been appropriated. That's not unlike previous years where we have spent uh, more, and we knew that we would spend more than the appropriation, um, but we've gone back uh, to to request, and I'll ask Chris to, to give you the details, uh, to request what the actual expenditures were. And I don't think that we've been far off in collecting what has been expended. Uh, much like in 2013, uh, for that inauguration, uh, we receive uh, a uh, um, line item in the president's budget to do the inauguration. Um, it was, we were that line item didn't cover the entire cost in 2013, and we went back to the federal government then. We'll be doing the same thing here. Um, we have actually been in conversations with uh, the Congress on where we are uh, with our expected expenditures. Some of those won't be known until well after the inauguration when we can tally up all the man hours and things that we've had to do. Um, so some of that's still going to pend uh, until after. Um, but as we look at our uh, costs, and much as the gentleman up front mentioned, uh, the demonstrations that we saw for an RNC and DNC, uh, much less than we'll see here. The RNC and DNC cities receive $50 million each uh, for their uh, two events. So we're, we're pretty confident that the Congress will work with us uh, as we only received 19.9 for the inauguration. So, and they've been very good in working with us as well. Yes, Peter. Mayor, um, there are some groups, um, some anarchist groups, that have no intent on getting permits. Um, is there any special thing the police or, or your city is doing um, in terms of either confronting or dealing with their stated intent of disrupting the ceremonies? Sure. Let me let me turn to uh, Chief Newsham. Uh, Peter, as you know, we've had uh, multiple demonstrations here in the city. In fact, we've had a number of demonstrations here in the city uh, since uh, the election. And uh, we consider it um, a circumstance that we're very well prepared to deal with. Uh, we don't anticipate any problems. Uh, the fact that you have uh, some folks that are indicating on social media uh, that they're coming to shut down uh, the inauguration or the events is something that we will be prepared for. Uh, we've, as you know, we've experienced that type of thing before in the city, uh, and we'll be able to handle it. I heard someone say on the news the other day, I think it was a member of the ACLU, that our posture here in the district, uh, the police department's posture and our federal partners, is to facilita facilitate uh, demonstrations of First Amendment assemblies, and that's what we intend to do. For mass arrests, if that, if that you, comes you know, to that. it's one of the things uh, that we always have to prepare for, but we don't anticipate that will be the case. New York used large dump trucks filled with sand in order to block some of the things, some of the routes into the first um, New, New Year's celebration. Is that something that's being thought of or planned? To Absolutely, we will. You know, we, we're going to use a, a number of different barriers to pre pre prevent 
uh, a large truck uh, type of situation like we've seen uh, in other parts of the world. You know, here's trucks filled with sand like they use in New York. We, we, you know, we don't talk specifically about our tactics that we're going to use uh, to prevent that type of thing, but we'll be well prepared uh, in the event that that type of thing was going to occur. Sam? How big are, how big are you anticipating? I know 2009 was uh, not as big as, uh, it was a lot bigger than 2012. <laughs> I, is it everybody out here, or just what are you looking for? Uh, I, I, we have no idea, you know, in terms, I wouldn't want to put a number on it, but as you probably have heard me say before, we expect, uh, we plan for, you know, very large numbers. And if they're smaller, then we're well prepared, but we, we plan for the biggest number possible. So I have asked my team, um, to look at the biggest inauguration, uh, that, that we've had, um, and to, you know, Look at various scenarios in terms of who's who's coming along the route, who's who who has a permit, who doesn't have a permit. So all of those scenarios. Literally a couple of weeks ago, I was trying to find members of my cabinet, the chief, the fire chief specifically, and they were all squirreled away doing a tabletop exercise, going through uh, these various uh, scenarios. So I, I won't be able to put a a number to it, uh, but we we're playing. We we look at the the out. Outside numbers. The, the biggest inauguration was for um, uh, the, in 2009, and we, we've planned um, from there. The rest of the city, uh, for, for example, I mean, you got all this attention downtown. Uh, is there are there agreements for like? the outer areas of D.C.? With yes, thank you for that. Or? So uh, we, of course, will be policing um, uh, all of Washington, D.C., our government uh, services. While we will have a lot of attention, as you see from all of these agencies, and making sure we have a smooth all, uh, inauguration, uh, the balance of the 33,000 employees of Washington, D.C. will be focused on day-to-day uh, -day operations of our city. Um, the inauguration is one day. It's Friday, January the 20th, and it is a federal holiday for the National Capital Region. Um, so we expect uh, D.C. government workers and federal workers uh, to have the day off. All of the days leading up to the inauguration and the days following the inauguration are regular days of business in Washington, D.C., and D.C. is open for business. Many restaurants and businesses will continue to be open on Inauguration Day as well. So feel free uh, not only to come in, in the core that's outside of the perimeter, um, but also to go around Washington, D.C. and shop and dine and do all of the things uh, that you are accustomed to doing. Our force, um, like for other inaugurations, will be augmented uh, by uh, national police Police coming from around uh, the nation that will operate under the command of our, our chief of police, um, Peter Newsham. I think we're adding 3,000, um, which is uh, typical. Um, and they will begin to arrive two days before the inauguration. Yes, ma'am. There are people that say they're planning to give out um, marijuana on the day of the inauguration. Will you be looking out for that and arresting people who are smoking in public? <laughs> We're going to be prepared for the peaceful demonstration of people's First Amendment rights. That wouldn't, wouldn't be our first priority. Yes? Uh, I know we won't discuss tactics, but can you describe any special uh, situation or, uh, or inconvenience that people might experience because of the uh, Trump Hotel being on Pennsylvania Avenue along the parade route? Will there be any roadblocks particular to that? Most buildings are federal buildings along the parade route there. Many are closed given it's a holiday, but that is a public hotel. How will you manage uh, crowds in and out of the hotel? On uh, January the 20th? Um, for that and the days leading up, will, will the public experience anything different because of that along the parade route? Does it present any special uh, security Let me concerns? ask the Secret Service to speak to that. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, an event of this size is going to necessarily disrupt the city, and uh, we're doing everything we can working together, the Secret Service working together with the city and with law enforcement um, and public safety partners to, you know, lessen that disruption. What we did for this inauguration that we haven't done before is we stood up a new subcommittee specifically focused on providing information to and communicating with uh, the residents of the city as well as the uh, businesses in the city. 
back uh, as early as back in October, we started reaching out to the uh, folks that are in the areas that are going to be most affected by the inauguration and providing them information about what they might expect on, uh, on game day. Uh, to date, we've reached out to over 1,500 buildings uh, and over 350,000 people and 5,000 individual businesses and provided information to them and, and let them know what they can expect. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to host a number of well-publicized town hall meetings so folks can come down and learn more information about what the, the road closures and other restrictions and give them a chance to ask any questions or voice any concerns. Uh, we've worked very closely with all the buildings in, along the parade route. Uh, some are private, some are federal, and we've come up with a plan to accommodate uh, all the folks that are in that building and make sure that we provide a safe and secure environment for everyone. Are they Anybody who hasn't gotten a chance? Yes, sir. Um, to the Secret Service if, or the Homeland Security, if you could. <coughs> what did Secret Service learn and local authorities learn from the RNC and DNC? where there were some protests, not as many as obviously it was expected, but that will uh, be instructive for you along the way. And a follow-up to that, have, have you had any type of specific threats that are uh, aimed at, at this event? The Secret Service works closely with our law enforcement and, and intelligence community partners uh, to ensure that we stay well aware of uh, potential threats. We're constantly enhancing and uh, tailoring our protective methodologies and bringing new tools and technologies to bear to protect against and mitigate these threats. Uh, I can't discuss the details of the security plan, um, but I can tell you that we will employ a robust security perimeter to defend against a number of threats. This will be a uh, multi-layer buffer zones around all our protected sites, as well as the motorcade routes and, of course, the parade route. And it will consist of uh, police officers and National Guardsmen and Secret Service and Homeland Security Investigation agents, as well as a number of physical barriers, and then controlled checkpoints to screen everyone coming into the events. At those checkpoints, there will be metal detectors, uh, as well as bag searches that are going on. In terms of what we've learned from past events, we are always uh, enhancing and adapting our methodologies. And uh, specifically, I can say that I went to the Republican National Convention and brought with me uh, members of the command staff from the U.S. Park Police and the Metropolitan Police Department and the uh, United States military uh, to take a look at what was going on there, to meet with the uh, law enforcement and public safety officials uh, in Cleveland and uh, see what their concerns were and what their challenges were, and to take back any lessons learned um, that we can apply to for the inauguration planning. On the question of threats, though, have you seen any or, uh, or addressing any specific threats related to this event? We're working closely with uh, the FBI and our other law enforcement and intelligence community partners to, to stay aware of emerging threats. We're, we're not going to discuss uh, any specifics. Can I just follow up with a specific? Earlier this week, we uh, weapons cache was found on uh, the CNO Canal. <clears throat> uh, was there is there any update to that uh, discovery and whether or not it had any implications with any existing threat or plot for the inaugural? Let me. Uh... Let me have the park police come up and address that, Chief. Is that right? Yes, uh, park police will uh, address that. Um, Sam, let me uh, add to an earlier question you asked. I neglected to mention um, that the D.C. National Guard uh, is also will also be deployed in downtown Washington, uh, and they will lead a group of guardsmen from forty two guardsmen and women from forty two states and have five thousand. Uh, guardsmen in, in downtown Washington that help us um, with uh, the perimeter. Is that new? No. I just I, I neglected to mention it. Uh, where's my park police officer? Thank, Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. No problem. Uh, Deputy Chief Burks with the United States Park Police. So just the short answer to your question is at this point that's still an ongoing investigation, but right now we have no reason to believe that it has any nexus uh, to terrorism or any linkage to the inaugural events. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm working with Newtown Dynasty TV. My question There's is... There's a microphone. Oh, thank 
you.、Uh, I just want to know how many security people or law enforcement people will be involved in overall the. Inauguration day. Sure. So,、uh, as I as I mentioned,、uh, as in all of the inaugurations, we put out a call early in the year for police officers to、um, augment the D.C. police force, and we expect、uh, an additional three thousand police officers.、Um, and we will also have the assistance of the National Guard,、uh, and we expect five thousand guardsmen uh, to uh, help us in downtown Washington protect our perimeter、uh, that has been.、Uh, Established around the parade route and the inauguration festivities. Folks,、um, how will the sad condition of the Arlington Memorial Bridge affect your ability to move people and equipment in and out of the city? Does anybody have、uh, anything to say about the Arlington Memorial Bridge? Let me use this as an opportunity、uh, to to focus the incoming administration's attention、uh, to the Arlington Memorial Bridge, which belongs to the National Park Service, which needs about two hundred million dollars、um, more、uh, to to be、uh, to be completed. It is an important connection, of course, between our city and our workforce, and the workforce in in Virginia.、Um, Um, but it's also a, a direct link、uh, to Arlington、uh, National Cemetery. It does have some weight restrictions, and I'm not sure if they are affecting、uh, this operation. Chris will speak to it. So, for the uh, inaugural uh, time period when we're we're doing the inauguration, the 19th, the 20th, and 21st, but particularly on the 20th,、um, the bridge will be closed for vehicular traffic and will only be used for pedestrian traffic. Question for Mr. Wiedenfeld: Is this something that you built in、uh, to safe track planning, knowing that, that you know this day there'd be an unusually high ridership, and how's it going to affect it? Is it setting back or? Sure, that, that we did actually build it in.、Uh, we had from the start we were not going to be doing work during that period. In fact, we will be shutting down all.、Uh, Uh, routine maintenance.、Uh, actually, this weekend,、uh, going forward, or after this weekend, going forward,、uh, just to make sure that there are no issues from that perspective. Mr. Wiedenfeld, just to follow up,、um, as you know, there are often problems on Metro that are unanticipated. Should something happen and there needs to be a single tracking situation, how will you handle that? Again, we're preparing just as the highway community is preparing. You know, if there were an accident on a highway, so we'll continue to do that and we'll be be prepared as well. Let me just、uh, emphasize a point that Mr. Wiedenfeld made earlier, because largely what we see when we have a lot of visitors come and try to use our metro system,、um, the the biggest problems they encounter is not knowing、uh, how to pay、um, and how to get where they're going.、Uh, so we are encouraging everybody to go to our website, Metro's website, and learn how to、um, buy the fare media in advance, and so you eliminate the uncertainty. Of how do I use the machine? How much does it cost? How do I get where I'm going? So to do that、uh, in advance of of the、uh, swearing in and inauguration activities. Yes. We're all for Arlington Voice of America.、Uh, park police. You, you guys in the D.C. area have three permits that were, have been approved. What about park police? How many permits have been approved thus far? So、uh, that process is still an ongoing process on a daily basis, as our National Park Service、uh, partners are working with the PIC to get the PIC to give them actual final answers on what spaces they're going to use and not use. So I don't have the numbers that they've released as of to date, but I know it's an on every day they're working on that. They're doing the best that they can to get the spaces released to the groups who've you know are actively engaged trying to get those areas for demonstrations. So I want to thank、uh, everybody、uh, who has been involved in this planning. And、uh, as I mentioned when I had a conversation with the president-elect,、uh, that、uh, the city has been involved in every one of、uh, these inauguration festivities, and we're well prepared. As well as you've heard, just about half of the national special security、uh, events. I want to thank law enforcement for all the planning that they've done, but also、um, mention、uh, that the human services. 
supports that go with a large scale events with with fire and EMS support and the health department and warming centers and all of those things are also in place. I want to thank in advance our business improvement districts that also are ambassadors uh, in the District of Columbia uh, to help people move around. I have no doubt uh, that people are coming uh, will not only uh, enjoy uh, the official activities of the inauguration, but also get a chance to see our restaurants, neighborhoods, uh, and communities. And thank you for spreading the word about inauguration.dc.gov and and at inaug17, which will be the official website and Twitter accounts for Washington, D.C. Thank you.